This is the site of the old Griffin's Dairy. The taxpayers of Abington, Massachusetts paid for this property. Some would like to see a school built here, while others would like ball fields or solar fields, and still others would like to protect this property with environmental education and agriculture. But for one group, a group that doesn't pay taxes, this place already has a purpose. This beautiful bird's name is Mac. He's going for a walk with his hunting partner. The first person he saw when he opened his eyes in 2003 is a hatchling. He thinks this person is an owl, his parent, his caregiver, his protector. Nature's what I like, and this is as close to nature as you can get right here. Marla Isaac is the director of New England Reptile and Raptor Exhibits. She is a naturalist, artist, falconer, and professional reptile handler. With over 30 years of experience, it's evident that Mac is in good hands. The noise he's making is an immature noise. When they're imprints, they do that for life. It's almost like saying, Ma, here I am, don't forget me, I'm right here. But Mac isn't as fluffy and cuddly as he looks. This right here will go through this glove like it was butter. Even though this glove is, is a triple, three layers in here to protect me. I like the thinner gloves because I like the feel of the bird. It depends on the falconer. Some people don't like the feel of this. I like the feel of the grip. They have about 500 pounds per square inch. An eagle has 2,000. So when these lock down, their little brain takes a little while to unlock. Oh, 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 oh. And they come down on it. It's like a kill, OK? If he was killing a live rabbit, he would grab it like that and do that. And <laughs> as you can see, he's having fun with it. Uh, it's kind of like my toy, so when I approach, it's kind of like a little hostility here, like, go away, it's mine, it's all mine. Owls are selfish, okay? Very, very selfish. One of the things I do is put my foot on it, because I'm going to transfer him from that to here with his rabbit leg. Come here. Hey, 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 look it. Come on. And that's a transfer, and what you do is you take this, and you put it back in here without him. So actually, you have to be good at sleight of hand. The rabbit's leg that Mac is now enjoying was one of his kills during a hunting trip with Marla. Because Mac has yellow eyes instead of dark eyes, he can hunt during the day. He also has great hearing. But you got to remember, these guys hunt by hearing. And their ears are right here, where these black lines are, right behind the eyeball, you can see the opening, you can see the back of the eyeball. It's really cool. As an educator and rehabilitator, Marla gives us an idea of the fragility of these birds, as she tells us a story of an injured bird she is now caring for. Well, it's the male owl that's feeding the female. He has, this eye is blown out with blood. It's not, he still has an eye. And this one has a little blood in it, and he's got to recover. It may take two weeks for all that blood to drain out of the eyes to see if he's got vision. Now, think about this. This is how difficult it is for this bird to survive. This is why they're protected. She's sitting on eggs. She can't go hunting. She can't leave those eggs. Her mate is not going to come home tonight or the next night or the next night to feed her. Come on. Ho, ho. Great horned owls have a lifespan of 40 years. This rabbit leg is, last, like I said, it's his kill from last year, December. I think that one. He had two. He got two. He got a big one and a little one. And he's going to calm down. Now, he'll eat the whole leg, bones and all. And they'll cough up what you've heard is called a pellet. And he's going to eat the fur and everything. The fur cleans the stomach out. Owls don't have a crop. Now, once he's done with this, I can't fly him anymore. They fill up because they don't have a crop. And he's going to fill up on that. And it's amazing that he can balance like this. He's actually trying to hide it. If he takes this from me, he'll fly off with it and he won't come down all day. He'll sit up there until it's all gone. And right now, he's gripping. I can't even pull that talon up. He's gripped. He's locked down on my glove. He's not going through. He knows exactly how far to go. And he's just going to feed off of that. 
we're just going to let him calm down. He thinks I'm not going to steal it. You never steal from your bird. Your bird will never forgive you for it, right? We don't steal, do we? No, we don't. I'm going to send them off. As we watch with awe, we might wonder about the fate of these birds of prey. As Marla reminds us, we have become detached from nature. And that's why places like Griffin's Farm are so important. We have choices now. Wildlife has no choices. Animals are stuck where they are. This is how they live. And once you take their habitat and nesting away, they don't exist anymore. They become extinct. If you'd like to learn more about nature and the home we call habitat, Marla and Mac would like you to join them for the first yeah. Environmental Awareness Day in Abington. It's April 21st, noon to 4 p.m., at the site of the former Griffin's Dairy Farm on Plymouth Street, Route 58, in Abington, Massachusetts. Anyone wishing to set up a display or for more information, call Jim Dabrowski at 781-878-1921. Or email Jim at jmdombrowski at aol.com. Wide eyed and innocent, depending on us. Turn your head in every direction. Who is it out there you're trying to save? Your eyes are open for inspection You see everything You don't miss a trick Your wisdom 